Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the group exhibit Hydrogen Fuel Cells and Batteries. We're here at the Technical Forum at the Hanover Fairground. I invite you to come and have a seat, have a drink. Uh, the drinks are all on the house and uh, you can enjoy the next discussion here. Our partner country this year are the United States of America and our next guest is from Novorox. So please welcome with me on stage the technical director, Dr. Philip Hutton. Big hands, please. Good morning. My name is Dr. Philip Hutton. I'm a technical director for Novorox Technologies. I have the privilege today of giving a talk on carbon monoxide selective methanation. This is a process that my colleague, Dr. Pavel Snitnikov, uh, worked on. Uh, he's in the audience right now, so if there are any questions, the more technical the questions, the more I'm going to defer to Dr. Snitnikov. Uh, simple questions, I can handle myself. <laughs> we are excited about CO selective methanation. We feel that it is an effective method for converting syngas into a high hydrogen stream that is compatible with PEM fuel cells. Before I go into the actual research, I want to give you a background on Novorox Technologies. Novorox Technologies is a New York company. It's located in Rochester, New York. It was founded in, in 2013, and it's a joint venture between Solid Cell and Unicat. Solid Cell is a solid oxide fuel cell company that has more than 10 years experience working with solid oxide fuel cells. Unicat is the commercialization arm of the Breskov Institute of Catalysis. The Breskov Institute of Catalysis has more than 2,500 scientists, engineers, and technicians. And uh, we tap into the talent in both organizations to make sure that we can develop and fabricate catalysts that fits your needs, that converts whatever fuel you want to convert into either syngas or methane. We also design, engineer, and manufacture reactors to house those catalysts and design and test reactor systems to help you commercialize your system uh, for the future. Here is a, um, some pictures of some of the items we work on. As you can see, we make a couple of different types of reforming sets. These are laboratory reforming sets. Uh, meant to help professors or laboratory personnel uh, test catalysts, uh, test different fuel cell systems. We provide the reactor, the catalyst, as well as the accessories necessary to test those uh, reactors and fuel cells. And the laboratory would provide the furnace and, of course, the um, measurement equipment. Uh, we make ceramic catalysts. We also make foil, solid, and porous wafer catalysts. Uh, one thing that we are excited about are metal foam catalysts and we're excited about that for reforming because the metal foam uh, provides high specific surface area it operates very well at high temperature and the um, the Latisse network really enhances thermal conduct conductivity towards the middle of the reaction zone from the outside uh, another system that we're working on is uh, our pilot scale systems we hope to do a demonstration in the Bakken oil fields um, later on this year in, in converting flare gas to methane. For fuel cells, we all know that they require hydrogen to operate. Okay? Unfortunately, our infrastructure relies on natural gas, diesel, gasoline, or other liquid fuels. The first step to using those fuels in a fuel cell is to convert those fuels to syngas through either partial oxidation or steam reforming. When you use either of those two technologies, you end up with a syngas that has about 10% or higher of, of carbon monoxide. For most fuel cells, carbon monoxide is a poison. If you're using a high temperature fuel cell, such as a solid oxide fuel cell or a bone carbonate fuel cell, you can use that syngas directly. If you have to use a uh, phosphoric acid fuel cell or a high temperature PEM cell, you have to reduce your carbon monoxide down to about 1% by volume. And you can do that with a water gas shift reactor. And an all water gas shift reactor does 
is it reacts the carbon monoxide with water or steam to convert the carbon monoxide to a carbon dioxide and converts the water to hydrogen. This increases the hydrogen content, it essentially switches uh, much of the uh, carbon monoxide to hydrogen. This occurs at around 250 to 500 degrees centigrade. And once you do this, you can use the syngas in your phosphoric acid fuel cell or your high temperature PEM cell. If you're using a low temperature PEM cell, you have to get your carbon monoxide down to below 10 ppm uh, by volume, okay? And there are only two ways of doing this. Uh, one is preferential carbon monoxide oxidation. The other is preferential carbon monoxide methanation. These are both low temperature reactions. And, and so, um, it, but they will, get your high, they will get your CO content down below 10 ppm and you can use them after that on a uh, PEM fuel cell. Uh, this shows you the possible reactions for both carbon monoxide preferential oxidation and carbon monoxide preferential methanation. For the preferential oxidation, uh, the reaction we're looking for, the favorable reaction, is the conversion of carbon monoxide to carbon dioxide through oxidation of carbon monoxide. Um, however, there are some side reactions. Um, if you add oxygen to, a, to the fuel stream, you'll also convert the hydrogen to water. Uh, obviously, that's unfavorable because we want as much hydrogen in the fuel stream as possible. And we also have the reverse water gas shift reaction. If you uh, looked at the previous slide, we used the water gas shift reaction to convert carbon monoxide to hydrogen. Well, you get a reverse reaction where you convert the hydrogen back to carbon monoxide. For uh, preferential methanation, our objective is to convert the carbon monoxide, react the carbon monoxide with hydrogen to make methane and water. Uh, the side reactions we're trying to avoid is the methanation of carbon dioxide. Okay, and of course the reason we want to avoid this is because we, we use a lot of hydrogen in that process uh, and we want to maintain a high hydrogen gas stream. Uh, and we also have the reverse water gas shift reaction that we have to worry about in this reactor. Uh, the reason we have chosen to go with preferential methanation over preferential oxidation is because uh, there are some advantages in the actual system design for preferential methanation, okay? With preferential oxidation, you have to introduce a separate airstream into the reactor, which means you're going to increase nitrogen dilution. Uh, with uh, preferential methanation, you can flow the syngas directly from your water gas shift reactor straight into the methanation reactor, okay, without the introduction of any other gas streams. This simplifies the overall system design, as you'll see later on. Um, and what you can do with that methane, when you flow that through a PEM cell, is at the outlet of the PEM cell, you just, you just combust the methane, and you can use that heat to uh, operate your steam reforming reactors. Uh, one of the, some of the issues we have to work with, with um, preferential methanation, is that it's a low temperature reaction, which means that catalyst performance is very low, okay? And so we have to work around that or make the system bigger. Uh, we also, because of the side reactions and because it uses hydrogen and the actual uh, methanation of carbon monoxide, we also use up a, a significant amount of hydrogen, which we would rather not do, but that's uh, at this point unavoidable. Uh, give you an idea of what happens. Um, this is the work that Dr. Snitnikov has done, uh, and, and what he has developed is um, a catalyst where uh, a nickel is deposited on cerium oxide, and it's doped with uh, chlorine. And the reason we dope it with chlorine is because uh, the carbon monoxide and hydrogen are activated over the nickel surface and are converted to methane. Typically, the carbon dioxide and hydrogen would be activated over the cerium oxide surface, uh, but when you dope that with chlorine, it blocks that reaction, and so you have higher selectivity towards the methanation of carbon monoxide, and that's what we're looking for. So we reduce some of the side reactions, and um, we increase the uh, methanation of um, 
carbon monoxide with this catalyst. This is the actual reactor that Dr. Snitnikov used. And what you'll see here is, and I'm going to explain this, uh, since the methanation of carbon monoxide is exothermic, it releases heat, we have to flow air through there to maintain the temperature within the temperature regime we want. Uh, and so you know, what you see here is that air goes through and then it goes through the inside are these catalyst foils. The foils are porous foils. They are coated with uh, nickel, chlorine, and cerium oxide. Um, the syngas flows cross current through the actual catalyst wafers and the CO is converted to methane and what you get on the output is a uh, synthesis gas high in hydrogen that is compatible with PEM cells. Now, keep in mind that the actual synthesis gas is not going to have a purity of 99.99% hydrogen, but what it does have is a composition that will not poison the PEM cell. And that's what we're looking for. This shows you, um, this illustrates what I mentioned earlier, how much simpler the methanation route is to, towards the preferent, compared to the preferential oxidation route. And what you see here is a water gas shift reactor. The, the um, syngas flows to the water gas shift reactor, reduces the CO uh, down to about 1% by volume, and then it flows directly into the methanation reactor. If you had a preferential oxidation system, you'd have to add air, you'd have to add uh, oxygen and it would complicate the system a bit more. And this system right here um, was used to process about five cubic meters per hour of uh, hydrogen. This shows you some results. Um, with a flow rate of 2.8 cubic meters per hour and a, a um, inlet gas mixture of 0.3, this is after the water gas shift reactor, 0.3% uh, by volume. We were able to bring the um, carbon monoxide content below 10 ppm, which is compatible with most PEM fuel cells. And uh, with a flow rate of close to five cubic meters per hour, with a um, inlet gas mixture, inlet CO content of 0.47% by volume, we brought it down to between 10 and 15 ppm, which is close to where we want to be. And those are the results, and uh, what we would ask is that you visit us as booth number D37. If you have any questions, you can ask here, and uh, Dr. Snitnikov and I will answer as best I can, or if you want to talk to us about uh, any needs you may have, we'd be happy to talk to you at booth D37. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much also from my side. Uh, Dr. Snitnikov is here to answer all your questions. Mm -hmm. So please raise your hand for questions. <laughs> it's still very early in the morning. Uh, the audience <laughs> is shy. It was maybe too technical, but I'm pretty sure that um, the audience can, can take all the questions to your booth. Your booth is right behind us at the technical right forum. Just mm -hmm. um, follow the Orange Brick Road. Okay, thank you very thank much. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Upcoming talk will be in only five minutes time. We'll hear representative of NOW. Um, the, we have merged the two presentations of 11 o'clock and 11.20. So 11.20 is cancelled, but 11 o'clock is extended. It is both um, a representation of the NOW.